Hi there, it's Rob from Octopus. Welcome to Octopus Deploy 2018.7. This month, our headline feature is Octopus Workers. Adding workers to your Octopus instance enables you to shift deployment work off the Octopus server. And this brings some fantastic benefits, including performance, security, and more. We're also shipping some perf and polish improvements. That is, we've made some great updates to improve Octopus server performance and usability, particularly for larger installations, including much lower CPU usage on SQL Server in some cases, improvements to deletion speed, and faster project and infrastructure dashboards. We're continually working to improve our user experience, and this month we tweaked the variable snapshot update process, as well as improving lifecycle, channel, and role scoping pages. Let's get started. I have an Octopus Cloud instance running with a single project called Random Quotes, and I have two environments, staging and production, and I've done a couple deployments. The interesting thing with this month's release is our infrastructure, so let's head over there. Looking at our infrastructure overview, you can see there's a few new additions. The most immediate is workers and worker pools. Before we explore any more, I'd like to talk about Octopus Workers and their benefits. Octopus Workers allow you to shift deployment work off your Octopus server. Octopus has always had a built-in worker, but we never called it that. Anytime you did deployment work that executed a script on the Octopus server, this was using the built-in worker. This includes Azure and AWS steps, as well as script steps where you specify to run them on the Octopus server itself. With the introduction of workers and worker pools, you now have the option to move this work to a separate machine, as well as create pools of workers to utilize for special purposes. Nothing has changed about how the steps are executed. Workers just provide an option about where those steps are executed. Why would you want to do this? First and foremost, this is more secure. This removes any risk associated with running custom scripts on the same server as your Octopus instance. Second, depending on your deployment patterns, this can really improve performance. By shifting deployment work off your Octopus server and onto one or more pools of workers, this will not only improve the performance of your server, but also the projects you're deploying. Third, you can do some really cool things like create worker pools to handle specific tasks like cloud deployments database deployments, and any other special tasks where you may have dependencies that would benefit from a dedicated set of machines. We'll look at an example of this in this video. Finally, it's important to note that adding workers or worker pools is completely optional. If you don't want to use workers, then it's really simple. Just ignore them and your deployments will continue to run fine. Now that we have a better understanding of workers, we can take a look at our infrastructure. As I mentioned earlier, we have two environments, staging and production. I have a single deployment targeter machine, and this is a Windows Server 2016 box, and it's running in Amazon Web Services. And so it's in both our staging and production environments, and it's also serving as both our database server and our web server. Now, obviously, we wouldn't do this in a real world scenario, but I'm doing this just for the sake of simplicity. I'd like to explore our workers and worker pools. And so if we look at the summary, we can see we have two worker pools and two workers, which are listening tentacles. So if I go to our workers page, we can see that we have two workers, database worker 01 and 2 and they're both a part of a custom database worker pool. Both of these machines have the SQL Server PowerShell module installed, so I can utilize them to execute scripts against any of my database servers. Now, in this case, I have a single project that could, that could utilize these, but in the future, there could be tens or hundreds of projects that all need database work done, and these could be utilized in parallel. Adding a new worker is as easy as adding a new deployment target. I click the add worker button. You can see an, I can add a listening tentacle, a polling tentacle, or an SSH connection. So I can add Windows or Linux servers and have them added as a worker. 
If we head over to our worker pools, we can see that we have two worker pools, the default one and our new database worker pool. I created the database workers pool so that my project or other projects can easily deploy and interact with databases without worrying about the dependencies. So both of these servers have the appropriate dependencies installed and can be utilized in any script steps to do a database deployment. So that's it, that's our infrastructure. Now let's head over to our project and take a look at our deployment process. Random Quotes is a simple web app that provides quotes as a service. It's built using ASP.NET Core and it uses Entity Framework Core to talk to a SQL Server database. So our deployment process is quite straightforward. And you can see our first step is to deploy our database. And our second step is to deploy our website. If we take a look at our database deployment step, just to expand all the details, we can see that this step is being executed in a worker pool on behalf of roles. So we're utilizing our database workers pool and it's being executed on behalf of our database role. If we take a look at the script details, I'm using a script file inside a package and I provide my package details, it's random quotes, and then the script file itself. I have a deploy database PowerShell script within my package and I'm passing all the parameters so it executes an update database SQL script and passes all the appropriate parameters. My SQL server name, database name, username and password. And if we take a look at the actual script, you can see it is quite simple. It is just executing a database script file. And this is utilizing the SQL Server PowerShell module, which is installed on my database worker. I'll take a quick look at my deploy website step because it is very stock standard. You can see that it's being executed on deployment targets with the role of web. And so those are all my web servers. And I'm again referencing my random quotes package and then I specify all the details to configure IIS for my web app. So you can see that I'm specifying my website name, my application pool details. I have different bindings for each environment, anonymous authentication, and I have turned on JSON configuration variable replacement because I am updating my app settings.json for each environment. And that's it. So now I'll jump back to my project overview because what I'd like to do is I'd like to promote my latest release, which is version 1.0.30 to my production environment. I've already deployed it to staging. It has a few minor fixes and updates and I'd like to deploy it to production, which will deploy using both workers and a standard deployment target. So from my project overview, I'm just going to click deploy I can see the deployment summary and I'm ready to go. So I'm just going to click deploy. So our deployment was successful, which is fantastic. Now, if I take a quick look at our deployment log, you can see that our first step, which was to deploy our database was indeed executed on our worker machine. And that's one of our servers from our database workers pool. The second step was executed against a standard deployment target. And this deployed and configured our web application. And so if we take a quick look, I can paste in our URL and we can now see some great random quotes. You can see that version 1.0.30 is running in our production environment. And if we refresh a few times, we can get some great random quotes. I'd like to summarize what we've seen today. Octopus 2018.7 introduced workers and worker pools, which allow you to shift deployment work off your Octopus server. This change brings several benefits, including improved security, better performance, and other cool things like the ability to create pools of machines dedicated to specific tasks. Thanks for watching. Links for all the resources used in this video are in the description below, including a link to start a free trial of Octopus Deploy. 
If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we're adding new videos weekly. Happy deployments!